Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Hey, howdy, hey. What the heck was that? (laughs) Just felt like changing it up. Well, that you did, my friend. That you did. Hey, howdy, hey. John here with Mike in the fat guy's pit. Yeah, in the pit. I'm, I'm liking that. Yeah, I like it too. It's pretty interesting. I feel like I just ruined this whole intro. And hey, howdy, hey! We've got to start like that now. Forever. I know, right? That's yeah, official. Oh, Shoot. The, the new official intro. I'm sorry, everybody. No, it's all right. But um, you were saying last episode was episode 50. It was. We didn't even. We didn't shout it out. We didn't post on social. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we're uh, episode 51. And they said we'd never make it. I know. I. Part of me can't believe, like, I just can't believe it's December to begin with. Yeah. It's been pretty wild. Oh, for sure. What a year. In some ways, it's like, holy cow, the year's over. And in other ways, it's like, <laughs> school needs to get out now. You know? <laughs> oh. Both things can be true, for sure. You teachers and <laughs> school kids. It's such a hard life we lead, all right? My mom was a nurse for so many years and she cannot stand teachers because they uh they'll set appointments and then my mom will be like well you can come at this time but i can't do that i'm a teacher she's like well figure it out she can't stand it now two of her kids are teachers so that's funny she's coming around it's pretty awesome hey yeah i i don't know man the rest of us figure it out yeah. Teachers can figure it out, too. I guess. I mean, we're just molding young minds, but whatever. No, I'm just kidding. It's a good life. <laughs> molding young minds. I'm, I'm not even going to touch it. John, I had uh, we had some good friends come up. My buddy Thane, that I've talked about, he brought me like a, a truckload of peach wood that he got just at what? some orchard down in Santa Quin. Anyway, they came to my house. And we're like, yo, what's this big life-changing news that we left the podcast on last week? They were very concerned. They were like, Whitney. Oh, oh, my life-changing news. Yeah. But they didn't know that. They are like, Whitney, you pregnant? And it was like, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Uh, And I'm sitting here like still going like, they brought you a truckload of peach wood, and I, this is when I find out about it? Dude, I will share it with you. It's still got to be seasoned, but pretty awesome. He's got it for free. They took out an orchard because they're going to do a lot of developing. And he, I mean, this is my buddy Thane. He's just awesome like this. He just rolls up and is like, what are you guys going to do with that? Oh, I don't know, burn it or throw it away. And he's like, so if some of it disappeared tonight, you'd be cool with it? And they're like, dude, have at it. Like, That's totally fine. So he brought me like pretty good amount it's pretty awesome that's fantastic yeah so yes i do want to try some indeed um yeah life-changing news yeah do tell we added to our family oh <laughs> but not that way oh no Haley's not pregnant thank goodness <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> that would have been awkward <laughs> surprise mom and dad <laughs> no we uh we got another puppy just a little guy yeah, she is tiny. Totes adorbs. Tiny, tiny. But she, um, like, John fit her in his hand and handed her to me, like, hey, yeah, here she maybe is. Maybe I'll, uh, pretty maybe, wild. Maybe I'll put a picture right here. Let's look at the camera right about there. Um, yeah, so I have always wanted to get a second lab. Mm-hmm. I've got beans. He's awesome. He'll be two in February. And the plan had been to wait for. Our older dog to to pass to kick the bucket, mm-hmm. um, or at least wait until Beans was like three or four. Mm-hmm. But my breeder decided she was getting out of the lap game and getting out of the game. 
really wanted to get another one from her just because. Sorry, um, got a burp. But that's all right. I get emotional too. When I talk about <laughs> my breeder's quitting. Yeah, for sure. Um, and look, there's lots of you shouldn't be getting a breeded dog. You should be getting a rescue, and rescues are great. <laughs> This is someone's livelihood, and they do a great job making sure that it's not a mill, and they go yeah. to the right place, and I choose to support that, so yeah. add at me. No judgment from me. Um, no, really, add at me. I like, we need the traffic on social. Yeah, come on, guys. So, um, but because of that, I, I wanted to get one more from them before that opportunity was gone, so we moved that up, and she's eight weeks old. Mm-hmm. Flew down to Phoenix on Saturday, um, flew back with her, which was an interesting experience. Like I, interesting. Uh, obviously I've seen people travel with dogs, but I'd never done it before. And did you like put her in the cargo or did you like put her no, in no, Haley's ha- purse? We like had a little carrier oh, that really? we bought and you just went under the seat. Carried it on, huh? Yeah. She was a total champ. Slept. Really slept the whole time we were in the airport, slept the whole time she was on the plane. Oh, that's awesome. Most of the drive home and then was up barking all night long because she had slept for six hours. Yeah, that's fair. So so you guys just got up in the morning, <laughs> flew to Phoenix and flew back? Yeah, we actually, so we had a 6 a.m. flight, so I burned some points, stayed at um, a hotel down by the airport, hmm. got up, got on a plane, flew down there, saw my aunt. Ate some really good Mexican food. Um, if you're ever in like the Mesa Gilbert area, there's a place called Rio Rico, mm. and you've got to go hit it. Like it's it's fantastic. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> so we did that, and then we went out to the breeder and picked her up and went back to the airport. That's awesome. Yeah. So it was a quick down and back trip, but just just kind of fun to get away with Haley and yeah. Puppies are just fun, man. That yeah. puppy breath, like that smell, like they should bottle that. Like <laughs> they've got like smelling salts to like wake people up. Like you could give smell, like puppy breath smell to someone and just be like, oh, calm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right on. Maybe nobody agrees with me on that. I don't know. I love puppy breath. All I can think is my dog's breath and it stinks. So. <laughs> that's because your, like, dogs, oh, that's your dogs, your dogs are beasts, yeah. man. Yeah. They are pretty, but, pretty hardcore. Yeah, so she's, uh, but she is tiny. She is probably half the size of what Beans was when I got him at eight weeks. Yeah, mm. uh, but she's awesome. She's a fox red lab, so mm. super pretty Beautiful. color. I love those dogs. Yeah, little redhead, mm. and she's spunky. Nice. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to bring her down here one night when we're recording. Yeah, it'll be fun. So I'm down. Yeah, cool. Anyways. So, sorry everyone that thought Whitney was pregnant. I will do my best to plant fake news like that. Again, in we the should future. just do that every, <laughs> just a random life changing news next week. It's like, oh, I forgot we said that. I don't know what it was. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, good. Good for you. Yeah. We're excited. Um, other big news. Yeah. Should we wait and tell everyone next time? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, we, we've, we've got a guest coming up, mm-hmm. um, which we just, I was just looking at the calendar. We were supposed to record that this weekend. That's not going to be able to happen. Yeah. This is, I don't it's know. It's a hard read, time of year. I the don't know how to read a time. calendar. Um, but Jason, AKA meat therapy, meat therapy is, uh, is going to jump on with us and it's, man, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm excited. Jason's Jason is one of the first people that I like connected with on social media when I started Hayden Barbecue, uh, and is known as the Chex Mix guy at my house. That my boys love his Chex Mix recipe that we make every year. Mm. So, man, I tell you what, he uh, he has a burger on his Instagram account that I cannot stop looking at. Dude, watching the amazing. yolk burst on that thing. <sighs> It looks good. Yeah. Looks really good. So we will uh we will be talking to Jason soon. We just we gotta work out the time. So yep. 
If you haven't, go check out his stuff. If you've got questions you want us to ask, Jason, throw them in the oh, that would be really in the good. comments, yeah. and we'll be sure to work those in. Yeah, please do. That'd be that'd make it more interesting <clears throat> for all of us. So, yeah. So we've got a for sure. There's a couple of you out there that are pretty dedicated on the comments. We appreciate you, Doug yeah. Demeron. Um, throw us a throw us a question for for Jason, and we'll we'll get it worked in. Yeah, it'd be great. Oh, cool. You've got a big weekend ahead of you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, you, you ever like agree to something, and at the time you're like, "Oh yeah, absolutely!" Like so excited, and as it gets closer, you're like, "Oh man, oh man, it's coming right up." I uh, only most only most days of the week. Yeah, I uh, yeah I agreed. Uh, my mother's family does a big get together, so there's, you know, her and m- all my aunts and uncles. She has six siblings, so. Uh, they try to get as many people together as they can, and now most of them have grandkids. I don't think any of them have great can- grandkids yet, but they're getting there. Anyway, it's it's turning out to be a lot of people. And so, uh, yeah, I agreed to, to cook for them. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about cooking for a crowd. No. Um, it's holiday time. A lot, of, a lot of guys with smokers maybe agreed to... <laughs> cook for parties or whatever and maybe it's your first one maybe it's your 10th one but or just got straight up volunteered and yeah. didn't have any say in the matter yeah we like to call that voluntold yes it's happening it's called marriage yeah for sure yeah so are you we were talking about this before mm-hmm. are you cooking everything or are you just cooking the meat i'm just cooking the meat okay everybody else is i mean we're kind of potlucking <clears throat> everything else so i'm just in charge of the pulled pork nice so and that like I think that's a pretty common thing like yeah have have the host or someone do the do the protein mm-hmm. so it tends to be the most expensive part usually and yeah yeah um so we were talking before as we were going to get drinks like you were having a little bit of a panic attack yeah yeah let's talk about that because the literature online. Uh, is contradictory. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know? uh, and that's the thing about barbecue and like most recipes. To find find one recipe, and then I can find three more that say the opposite. Yeah. Uh, so lots of practice, and sometimes you just got to get after it. And when you can, I would say over prepare. Mm-hmm. And then learn how to scale back. Yeah. But if you come up short, we'll we'll talk about ways to stretch it. Too. Yeah, so absolutely. What uh, what did you read and what have you decided on? Well, here's a story. John and I, we did some for our church group. Was that a year ago? Nah, not quite. It was like in April. Was it April? No, I think it was a year ago, April. I think we're coming like a year and a half ago. No, really? I think so. That's crazy. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's yeah. Because right. in April we were waiting to be released. No, I think it was April because I just got my smoker done and I did that last winter. That was the second time we did that. You're That's right. right. We did That's it right. twice. Yeah, you're right. Anywho, we okay. cooked pulled pork for how many people did we decide? Two hundred ish. Two hundred ish. Yeah. Um, and so we had talked a lot about how much now there's a lot of kids involved and that plays a role, I think. Um, and so we kind of correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I think we kind of decided a quarter pound per person, uh, is what we're going to kind of shoot for. Yeah. And I think, I think on that one, we actually went even a little more. Did we? Because we did a third a pound because that's all we were doing. Oh, that's right. There we, were no sides. We did there sandwiches. There were no sides. We did sandwiches. We did them on big buns. Mm-hmm. And we said, like, we want them to be big, good sandwiches. Yeah. So. That's I, true. I think on that one, we did a third. And you, you get all these different rules. And I think it, you can't just take a rule and make a decision with it. Because right. Because you've got to think about the demographics of it. Like, if I was cooking for... A bunch of guys like us, I'd probably do a half pound a person. Sure. And these are all uncooked weights that we're talking about. So I would buy a half pound per person. 
Yeah. If I was doing us and wives and it was mostly going to be the sandwiches for pulled pork, I'd do a third of pound. If I had a ton of kids, like most of the time, you know, Haley's family, my family, sounds like your mom's family. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to be about half kids. Like I'm probably only going to do a quarter pound. Okay. So, and that'll get supplemented by salads, casseroles, cookies, chips, everything else that's there on the plate. Mm-hmm. So, now, and you're saying raw, like that's what it is. Everything I'm reading online is telling me, and actually, I just put it into Chat GPT, our third podcast host, and it said for a generous serving, you'll need about a half a pound of cooked pork. Per person. That's insane, dude. Isn't that crazy? Like, in my mind, that's... If everywhere... Go to any restaurant you want. Yeah. A quarter pounder with cheese, that is a quarter pound of raw meat after... Like, before it's cooked. Yeah. A half pound burger, that is a huge freaking burger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... No. Sorry. I'm going to push back on that. I don't buy it. Like, And I feel like we didn't do that when we cooked for the ward. No. We ended up having a ton left over, and we fed a lot of people, and we were not stingy with no. how much we fed them. No. So. So that those are my like my ratios. It's a third, a half. It's a half, a third, or a quarter, depending on the makeup of your group and what else you're serving with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it. Yeah. I think... Other meals, you can do, like, there are different things out there. Prime rib, I tend to go two people to a bone. Oh, that's a that's an interesting way to look at it. That makes yeah. sense. You can, I mean, you can do three, especially if there's kids or light eaters, and you're going to have a whole bunch of other stuff. Or if you're having sandwiches instead of having, you know, like steaks of prime rib. Um, chickens, I tend to figure three to four people per bird. Okay. So Hmm. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I just can't get over how many, I mean, as I Google it, I, you Googleized it. The Googleizer. The Googleizer. I'm still getting people that are like, no, you need a third of a pound. Um, cooked and that just seems like so much to me um but i don't know yeah and i like look i was just in texas and spent a lot of time at barbecue restaurants while i was there Mm -hmm. and like yeah i would order a quarter pound cooked as my smallest portion or you know get a half pound of pulled pork and like it was a big pile of meat, but all I was eating was meat. Like I had, I had some small side servings mm-hmm. of green beans or of mac and cheese, but I was eating meat for the meal. Yeah. And if that's the case, like yeah, maybe I could see a third a pound. Mm-hmm. But in, like in reality, you're not eating just that at a, at a family gathering. Right. And we talked about if you're doing sandwiches, like you're not gonna have. A third of a pound sandwich that would be insane yeah so let's maybe let's talk about some strategies here because mm-hmm. it's always a game right um and sometimes that that one one family member that who says they're not coming does does decide to show up and they don't just bring their kids, but they bring their kids and all their, their friends and, and their kids friends and all of a sudden now you went from 40 people to 60 people and you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's some kind of simple strategies you can do to, to try and stretch your meat. Yeah. That sounds funny. Um, <laughs> I was hoping it would pass and it didn't. And I was like, that's my bad. Uh, shouldn't have said anything. High school. This teacher. is something that I've kind of noticed. Like, cause I help out in the lunchroom when you're feeding a crap ton of people, it, it it can't really be a buffet like you have to you have to use those strategies so that things stretch and, and go mm-hmm. a little bit further 
Yeah, or if it is a buffet, how you set up your buffet is a huge, like, there is a whole science to it. Hmm. Um, and it seems like, <laughs> it seems like everyone always does it backwards th- from the way I think it should be. What's the way when, you think it should be? So I always put the meat at the end. Interesting. I like that idea. Um, especially when I'm trying to stretch meat. Mm-hmm. Um and if you've got an abundance and you don't have to worry about it, like <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep saying stretch meat, man. <laughs> Call you straight sorry. to the straight to the gutter with listen, you. Listen, I spent your mother's all of my gonna time listen to this with fifteen year olds. I am sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, mom. If you're trying to ensure that there is enough sustenance. <laughs> like everything I'm saying now is just dirty. Um, no, you're doing a great job. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's very immature of me. I'm sorry. Everything I'm like getting ready to say, like I can't help. But <laughs> you gotta like it dirty run way. it through yeah. your yeah. Um, but that makes sense though, because honestly, I've gone through a lot of those lines. You're gonna fill up your plate with salad, yeah. and beans and mac and cheese, and by the end, your plate's mostly gonna be full, and there's not gonna be a ton of room to really pile see that's a great idea so, because i mean when your plate's empty and the meat is there you're just dumping it on yeah the, the yeah. old expression of like your eyes are bigger than your stomach mm-hmm. like your eyes want to see a full plate yeah so if your protein is first you're going to take more protein than if it's the last thing on the line yeah um plate size Use an 8-inch plate instead of a 10-inch plate. Again, like, it's going to... They're not going to notice that it's a different size plate unless they're sitting next to each other. Right. But, again, less space, less real estate to fill up, Mm -hmm. less food you're going to eat. Yeah. Um, And then the size of the bun is the other thing. We were talking about this, like... When we did that ward activity, mm-hmm. man, we were we had like the big giant Costco Sam's Club buns, and that was fantastic because it was the sandwich was the star of the show. Yeah. Um, but if not, like, don't use the giant buns. Like, use the smaller grocery store size buns, and right. that'll really again extend it because. That bun is now full. You're not going right. to, you don't have room for a half pound. Yeah, of... you can't stack that up this high. Yeah. yeah. So, good call. Those are, uh, those are a couple of the things I think make it a lot easier. And like you said, like the, the other option is, man, portion control. Like, have someone making the sandwiches. Yeah, somebody dishing it up. Mm hmm. For sure. So, for sure. I like it. We just cruised through like all of the content that we had planned for Whoop. protecting. <laughs> I, like I'm just gonna stop talking. Everything I'm saying in my head is no. dirty before it even gets out. Great. Now that was good. <laughs> if you're gonna protect your meat, <laughs> <laughs> one thing I was thinking, and I think Molly nailed this when we when we uh, talked with him. Uh, if you haven't listened to that episode, go check it out. When we talked with Molly Brew and Barbecue, did yeah. a great job, and I learned a lot just from sitting with him for a half hour, forty five minutes, however long it was. Um, but he said, you know. When when he cooks and he does a lot of stuff for his high school and stuff like that, he's a, he's an assistant principal, right? Mm-hmm. So he he'll uh, I don't know if cater is the right word, but he'll do all kinds of events and stuff for students and parents and faculty. And uh, he said, you know, I get so nervous um, when I'm doing it for other people, like oh, you know, so high strung and everything. And he's like, nobody cares. Like you're gonna do a fine job. You got to get out of your head, like. And just enjoy it. And I, mm-hmm. I love that because I, I'm i the same way. I did the turkey for Thanksgiving one year and I didn't sleep at all that night and was freaking out, you know. <laughs> and you got to enjoy it. Like, it's going to be delicious. I mean, most of the stuff that that we do is pretty hard to screw up. So, I think I think that's a key too, especially if it's your first time doing dinner for a lot of people or lunch or whatever. Um, get out of your head. And just remember how much you enjoy it and remember how good you are at it. And yeah, you know, like be prepared. Like, doesn't mean you don't 
get to like thaw the turkey. Oh yeah, the night no. Before like no. Yeah. do all of those things to For be sure. prepared so that you have a chance of success. But yeah, yeah you're right. And, like the worst thing that happens, like it all goes to crap, and like your grill catches on fire, and then you've got a killer story. <laughs> I was going to say, like, then you've you're got gonna, an awesome story. You're going to laugh about it. Like you're going to be pissed and you're probably not going to see the humor in it that right. that day and that night. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guarantee you, like, you ruin, you ruin the turkey and everyone ends up eating pizza on Thanksgiving. Like, people are going to remember that. And mm-hmm. n- every time I've ever heard a story like that, everyone remembers it so yeah. much better. Mm-hmm. So, Right. And I think, I mean, nobody... That your feeding is going to be a barbecue, judge, critique, everything you do, you know. People want delicious, smoky, uh-huh. you know, like, I don't know. Sometimes I just get in my head like, oh, what seasoning should I use? I don't know if they'll like this. And it's like, yeah. what am I doing? Like, Yeah, and if they are, like, eh, those are what we call relatives yeah. and not family. You need so. to, yeah, space, like, hopefully they don't come back next year. And you, can, <laughs> you know, just kidding. <laughs> You need to get that negativity out of your life anyway. No. So, well, yeah. It, uh, but yeah, it's a busy time of year. I hope everyone gets a chance to cook a little bit. Yeah. Enjoy Use some it as time an with family. For and, sure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Alrighty. I love it. Love it too. They're playing our song. You mean this one? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of Fat Guys with Smokers. Don't forget to like, subscribe.